Hello. My name is Poppy Hayseed. This is the story of Omar Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. This is an abridged telling of the unpublished graduate thesis developed by Deloitte J. Guth, in pursuit of his master's degree in history in 1963 from Creighton University. Chapter 19, November 1890, The Birth of Populism While Kim had the political situation well in hand, he did face one minor revolt in his home county. A small alliance group in Custer County, numbering five members, bitterly waged a short attack on Kim in the closing days of the campaign. But, since it was only one group out of the 88 organized in the county, Kim had little cause to worry. The quarrel stemmed from what the Alliance Press called a private grievance, the exact nature of which never became clear, and, as was to be expected, the Republican press leapt at the opportunity to discredit Kim. The Kim supporters immediately expelled the five ex-Republicans from the Custer County Alliance Network, but not before their voices had tarnished the glittering shield of farm unity, which had been consistently presented throughout Kim's campaign thus far. On November 1, Omer Madison Kim, wearily finished his final rally, with a rousing speech and broken bow. The Republican press wishfully claimed that Dorsey had gained strength through the final days of his campaign, but the time for facades of a perpetual incumbency had long since passed. Kim spent the next two days at informal get-togethers in his home county. Then, after casting his ballot, Kim retired to the Capitol at Lincoln on November 4, 1890 to await the official election returns. It was here at Lincoln, that Omer Madison Kim first met his youthful counterpart, William Jennings Bryan, the Democrat populist candidate from Nebraska's 1st Congressional District. The Democrats and populists, as the press had dubbed the People's Party, jointly awaited the expected demise of the Republicans. Their joint celebration, over the corpse of the Republican devil, would not be long in coming. Kim took an early but slim lead over his three opponents, however, the election in the Big Third, hung in the balance for a week. Finally, when all of the votes had been tabulated, Omer Madison Kim and the People's Party, now known as the Populist Party, deservedly accepted the wreath of victory on behalf of the farmers. Omer Kim had received 31,831 votes, while his closest opponent, the incumbent Republican Dorsey, garnered just 25,140 the third place went to the Democrats and their nominee Thompson, with 22,353, while the Prohibition Party amassed a grand total of just 961 votes. In his successful bid for Congress, Kim captured 28 of the 52 counties. His greatest victories came in the counties surrounding and including Custer, for this was the area where most of the homesteading had been centered. At the same time, Kim had shown an ability to obtain a margin of victory in several counties on the eastern and western borders of Nebraska. In the counties which remained Republican, Kim's defeat was usually by only a slim plurality. This was especially true for every county west of Custer. Not only did he capture heavily rural areas, but he also emerged victorious in those counties in the Big Third containing most of the western towns. Hence, Omar Madison Kim's victory sounded the death knell for the Republicans in 1890, and produced what they themselves called, a political revolution. The thunderbolt with red hair had struck, leaving farmer unity and political chaos in his wake. In general, Kim's dramatic victory, had represented a total rejection of the special interests, against which he had, so ardently, campaigned. Kim's victory had also signaled the uprising of a new special interest group, the farmers. Long left on the fringes of growing economic wealth, they had risen, in organized revolt, in 1890 to demand a greater share of the nation's prosperity. Omar Madison Kim had viciously attacked the moneyed interests, while at the same time, his campaign had positively represented a cry of hope for the agrarians. In so doing, Kim had fostered a consensus of opinion which placed extreme emphasis on the rights of the common people, and their struggle for economic and political redemption. The end result of the campaign and election of 1890, had been an emotionally charged class struggle, which had been as much fostered by Republican charges of pauper candidates, as it had been by Kim's pleas to the discontented farmers. Kim's campaign had been waged with an almost religious-like zeal, 
and had been directed toward real economic problems, which were continuing to grow in the wake of rising industrialism. In the process, Omar Madison Kemp had been successful in tying his personal ambitions to the rampant rural discontent of the times. The result had produced a professional farmer's advocate, possessed of the opportunity to carry the agrarian crusade into the hallowed halls of Congress. By his election to Congress in 1890, Omar Madison Kemp had secured for himself a new lease on life. As he later admitted, I was greatly relieved in a financial sense, for I had taken desperate chances that would have most certainly ruined me, if I had failed. Instead of abject poverty, Omar Kim's victory had secured to him an annual income of $5,000, plus travel and stationary expenses. Moreover, Kim's election had won victory for him and for his agrarian crusade, and had thereby reaffirmed his faith in the righteousness of his cause. Omar Madison Kim had fulfilled his promise to the nominating convention by doing his best to be elected. As a matter of fact, Kim had accomplished the nearly impossible by cracking the two-party system wide open in his first attempt to do so. Now, Omar Kim had another and much bigger, more difficult promise to fulfill for all of the farmers in the third district. As a result of his unlikely election to Congress, Kim would have the opportunity to take the agrarian battle into the very stronghold of the enemy. That brings us to the end of another chapter in our story titled Omar Madison Kim, the People's Congressman. Please click on the link in the comment section below to move to the next video. In the next chapter, we'll follow Kim's journey to Washington, D.C. and the halls of Congress to continue his agrarian crusade. You won't want to miss it. I'm your narrator, Poppy Hayseed. Saying so long for now, thanks for watching.